Welcome golf fans, pursuers of knowledge and the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the Northern Trust, the first leg of the FedEx Cup playoffs. This is the Picks and Bets show. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you're new, hey, give me a few moments. Check me out. Hopefully I can get you an edge, help you out with your DFS picks and also with some of the bets that I like. I'm going to break down all the analysis on my top 15 players. That will be from the very top at 11,000 and down to 7,000. And then, of course, I will release a show on Wednesday going over those value plays. Okay, with that said, let's get into this. And the first thing I want to talk about, of course, I have a giveaway for these FedEx Cup playoffs. And if you've been with me for a little bit, you've already seen this, but I'm telling for anyone that is new, what am I doing? I am giving away $1,000 out of my own hard-earned dollars to one lucky subscriber. And if I get to a thousand subscribers, which I'm only about to less than 200 off, I'm gonna go ahead and double that and make that two winners. And all you need to do is subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, like this video and share it with anybody else you think it might help out. And just tell me in the YouTube comments below who you think is going to win all the way through to the FedEx Cup playoffs, of course, winning the Tour Championship. Okay. If you missed the preview show, which I just put out not long ago, um, I went over my skill rankings on the guys on what they need to do very well from a stroke gain analysis to actually win the Northern Trust. And I, as I mentioned, we have some past history here. We can do some evaluation. And the first thing that really pops up is that you have to be a really good ball striker. Of course, that is off the tee and approach pretty much combined. Then I'm emphasizing approach a little more because that's how you score. Of course, getting closer to the pin. You got to hit the fairways on this course or you're going to be in big trouble. So we got to go ahead and make sure we get some distance, but we also are hitting the fairways. Putting is always crucial and we don't want to get a bunch of guys in the lineups that, uh, you know, can hit ball, strike the crap out of the ball, but really can't make putts. Around the green is going to be crucial here too. Shows up in past history and then also approximately the pin that's coming in. Uh, you got about 31% of those approach shots or 200 plus. You got between 175 and 200 yards coming in. 21% of the shots from that uh, area. You got some bulk of uh, long par fours, 450 to 500. They're going to need to manage those. You've got three long par threes. And then you got the very two gettable par fives. There's three par fives, but there's two gettable ones. The other one's around, I believe, 620 yards or something like that. Um, so hopefully you par or birdie that. But there is two that you can definitely eagle and make birdie. And last but not least, you got to get uh, a lot of birdie opportunities here. And that's what we're going to be looking for. Okay. And then also I covered the comp courses and what this is, is looking at mostly no cut events, uh, but I'm going to leverage the Northern Trust, of course, 2019. And we can look at TPC Boston. It plays different, even though it's very similar in yardage and par and all that and bent greens, but it is a different course uh, where they're at at Liberty National is quite a bit tougher. We look at the BMW Championship. We're going to look at Jack's Place and Memorial. We're going to look at Riviera, the Genesis, Bay Hill for the API. I like the 3M Open. I think there's some similarities from bent grass and par 71 around the same yardage. Um, there's a lot of water, so you got to keep it in place. I'm going to leverage that. But look at the Honda. Also a tough track. It's a par 70, a little shorter, but there is the water. And, um, you know, there's just things that I think at the Honda you have to do well. Also, you get the WGC. No cut events we're going to look at. The CJ Cup uh, this past fall and the Zoso. Um, if you look at this here, this is just looking at no cut events over the past 24 rounds. Just to get you some names. If you're thinking, and that's the model uh, from the large model side that I did. Okay. With that said, I'm going to jump over to Fantasy National as always, and we're going to walk through these guys that I like. Also, you're going to see the guys that I'm not picking and be able to see a little bit why I'm making that decision. Okay. So I'm over in Fantasy National. Again, I highly recommend it if you are doing your own uh, you know, analysis and research. Uh, it's a great tool. Uh, you can get a lot accomplished in one place. And I'm going to be looking, of course, leveraging DraftKings. So from a DFS perspective, if you play FanDuel, of course, you can use my picks. But the pricing is going to be a little different. And just so you know what I'm looking at here, I've made more of a what I call a mini model. And what I like about this view is it's going to give you the key stroke gain areas that I'm looking at. It's going to give you the birdie or better I've got pulled up here. Recent results and also tournament history, which we got to look, you know, make sure that... Uh, we're going to be focusing on 2019 at Liberty National. Uh, I've got no filters turned on, which you could put different filters. And maybe during this, we'll flick 
a couple on just to see how that changes. Um, but I am looking over the past 24 rounds. Usually I look over the past 12, but because we've had quite a few easier tournaments uh, over the last few events, uh, I don't want it to kind of skew the results. Um, so that's why that's being pulled a uh, little bit larger sample size. Okay. So the first guy starting at 11.5, of course, John Rahm. He's been in Fuego. Of course, you see this withdrawal memorial. We all know that he had a positive test um, after Saturday. Would have won that tournament. I think he was winning by six strokes. So we'll just put that as a first place also in my mind. Uh, but it, he had a, a t tie for eighth at the PGA. You know, he won the U.S. Open. Had a nice comeback to have a T3 at the Open. Uh, you can also look at his past history. And we want to focus on this, as I mentioned, 2019, where he had a, a tie for third. Of course, the winner that year was uh, Mr. Patrick Reed. And if we go ahead and look at the mini model, kind of the key areas that I'm going to be looking at is the ball striking. Um, as I already mentioned, I'm also going to be looking at this fairways gained and this Prox 175. All of it, I like to see this green, but those are probably the three main ones that I'm looking at very heavily. And if we go click on John Rahm to look at some deeper information for you, you know, you can see Poe is his best putting surface over the life of his career. But he gains, we'll just say, almost a quarter stroke against the field on bent. Of course, these are bent greens that they're going to be playing. Uh, difficult courses, he handled himself well. Uh, but, of course, not easy, too. But it's good to see this bar up here on difficult. I'm actually going to look at the off the tee. You see this graph. Everything is on the way up. And also represented here over his last 103 tournaments. Pretty amazing. There's not one red box. So that's, that is very rare. Of course, at the open, we don't have stroke gain information, but you can see again, uh, firing on all cylinders. Uh, the putter is what was holding him back. Uh, you could see this here when he was not playing well, he was just struggling with the putter. I think also he said he had some focus issues. Of course he had a baby on the way. So there was a while when I was out on ROM, but I mean, the guy is, you know, all systems go. So, so let's go pull up. Uh, we already looked at the Northern Trust. Um, he had a T3 for the year that we want. Uh, bah, bah, bah. If we go look at the BMW at Olympia Fields, you can see he won that last year. I believe that was a playoff with DJ. Uh, they had a little bit of a putting duel at the end there. Um, so all good at the BMW. Of course, these are some different, but the last one, it was at Olympia. Uh, let's go look at the Memorial. So, of course, he won. Well, he would have won back-to-back. -back, uh, so, he does very well at Memorial. That is Bent Greens also. So, par 72, 7,500 yards. But water does come into play on 13 holes there. So, I think, again, applicable. Let's go take a look at the Genesis. Uh, he had a fifth this year. That's POA. But um, kind of a similar course as in par 71. About the same yardage. It's a difficult track and a difficult field. So, that's why also I'm looking at that. A 17th and a 9th. The API, I'm not sure if he's ever played the Arnold Palmer. He has not. And I don't think he's ever played the 3M. What about the Honda? Okay, for Ron, let's go look at the WGC events. And uh, this will be the one at concession. And then the other ones you see in Mexico would be that Club Day Chipotepec. Um, you know, he's been pretty solid. His best would have been a third, it looks like, in well, a couple thirds at the WGC Mexico. A seventh. I'll go click on that. I think, yeah, those are POA greens for there. All right. And um, let's look at how he did at the CJ Cup. He had a 17th and then Shadow Creek. Oops, that was actually called the Zozo. He came in second. Um, and just so you know, also, both bent greens. Uh, at the CJ Cup, it's 7,500 yards, par 72. Sherwood's a little bit shorter, 7,100 yards, par 72. Uh, but they were both bent, and they're both no-cut events, so I just thought I'd throw them in there just for a last. I don't think I need to say on Rom. Um, usually, I do not pick the first guy. I've always said this. But, you know, there's two guys at 11,000. Um, you know, you could make an argument for DJ starting to show a little bit of life. Um, you know, he had that miscut at the 3M Open, but, you know, showed up at, uh, in Memphis at the St. Jude. And, you know, if you look at DJ, just for your guys' own information, 
this was what I was looking at with him. You know, uh, the putter was where he was struggling. Uh, we scroll down there. You can see a few events. You know, you can look here at at uh, the WGC Mexico at concession where he lost 10 strokes with the putter, which that's really hard to do. But it's starting to come back. You see the greens. Um, but, yeah, just still haven't seen enough. So if I had to pick between the two of them, I'm going to spend 11. And, again, from a DFS perspective, I'd go ahead and plug in Rom. Um, you know, I looked at Jordan, but, you know, just watching Jordan, in my eyes, what it's seeing is he's starting to question the putter. Um, and it's really going to come down to that with him. You can also see over his last 24 rounds, uh, he struggles from the 175 to 200. Uh, he's 91 ranked. So that was, you know, fairways gain. This has gotten better. The driver has gotten better. Um, but yeah, all said and done. Um, no go. Now, Xander, I'm actually got a bet on. Uh, I do like him here. But again, it was kind of a toss up between Morikawa. You can see the big model, uh, you know, way like Morikawa, much more. Um, you know, of course, Morikawa had, you know, didn't play as well at the WGC. But also, you know, as a lot of travel um, that he's been dealing with and a lot of golf. Of course, he won the Open, so it's no shocker that the next tournament he wasn't going to be super. But it's going to come down to putter with him. But I know this course, he will hit, have a lot better of hitting the fairways. You see leads the field and ball striking. Um, you know, he's ranked 24th, one of the better iron players out there. Of course, he was number one on approach. Um, I don't know if that changed. You can see the birdie or better kind of dropped a little bit. That's due to Memphis, the WGC St. Jude. And uh, he missed the cut here last year, uh, oddly enough. Uh, but uh, it was a T-52 last time played here. Let's go click on Colin real quick. We'll run him through some of the courses. You can see the putter is the issue. But Bent over his career has been his best putting, his best worst putting surface. You know, plays really well on difficult courses. Funny enough, not as good on easy. And if we just look at off the tee, you know, still on the way up. And again, I'm just pulling that. Again, you can see the putter. Uh, it's typically been his nemesis. And that's what happened here. Lost two strokes putting at WGC. Also approach, you know, was shockingly for him, as you can see on average, he's gaining somewhere, somewhere five to 10 strokes um, steadily. So that was an anomaly with at the irons. And that might get some people off him, but I'm sure, you know, he hit the range and figured that out. Of course, you can see the recent form uh, has been very solid. And uh, we already looked at the northern. If we go look, what did he do at the? Well, if he missed a cut, then he. So in 2020, he was 20th. Okay, so he still, uh, even though he technically, but points wise, he still made it to the BMW. And had a 20th showing out of 70 guys. That's pretty solid. What about Memorial? I think we just looked. He had a second uh, this year, right? So he had that playoff, of course, with Cantlay. The default uh, from Rom, And then a 48th before that. Uh, bu -bu 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 Let's take a look at the Genesis. A 43rd and a 26th. So not the greatest uh, swing there. Arnold Palmer, he had a ninth in 2020 and a 64. So that's at Bay Hill. I don't know. Did he? He did play the three on, but that was back in 2019. That's right. He had a. That's where uh, Mr. Wolf chipped in for an eagle or putted from the fringe for an eagle. Um, what about the Honda? He's never played in the Honda. And then let's go see his WGCs. So, of course, he missed a cut the tournament before this and then uh, won uh, the WGC event at concession. Um, you can see again, almost gained 10 strokes on approach, but the putter really came back. That was when he was implementing, I guess you'd call it the claw. And, um, what about the CJ cup? He had a 12th, uh, this past fall and at, uh, the Zozo, he had a 50th and then a t well, the, the other one's not the one I'm really concerned with, but a 50th in the fall. Anyway, so I'm on Morikawa. I like him, you know, Xander. You know, had a, you know, not the greatest showing after winning the gold, but I have no issues with plugging in Xander. I'm just kind of leaning uh, a bit with Morikawa, just again more steadier. You know, Brooks. Uh, I don't. I just. I don't usually get this guy right now. I hit him 
at waste management bet, but that was just due to his odds. And, you know, I think I bet it on Friday um, when his odds went to like 80 to one or whatever it was. So, you know, you can see was pretty solid and then had the, you know, kind of the fallback. Also, you can see around the green fairways gained, uh, not where I want to see it. The putter hasn't been where it is, but, you know, his ball striking is elite. You know, Rory has been showing us some life. Uh, I actually have a, uh, a bet on Rory. I believe it was 20 to one. I think that's a good bet. Um, but, you know, it's again what he can do with the putter um, in the fairways game. But, you know, he won at Quail and then it showed some more life. So, you know, you could kind of think of that. Justin Thomas just, his putter is so bad. I don't know what to do. Now, you know, and I don't even think from a betting perspective, they're just not giving you enough to bet him. If he was over 30 odds. I think he last I looked, it was around 24, 25, 28 to one, whatever it was. It was in the, the lower 20s. Um, but you can see really doing nothing at it, but you know, it's Justin Thomas. Again, I always say these guys are one swing away from, uh, finding something to Shambo. I just can't take the blowups. Uh, you know, again, he just blew up at uh, St. Jude, uh, to go from actually, you know, leading a tournament. And you could, you know, also say that with English, but, um, you know, we watched it at the open, it was two back nine, just disasters. Uh, so I'm off on to Shambo for a little bit. And also is around the green. He's really been struggling, uh, which is really not likely. His fairways gain, I mean, he was doing better. Um, also, you know, right, he was coming off COVID. And, um, you know, maybe that you could maybe say he wasn't feeling that well, but he was playing well. It also wasn't, you know, it's kind of interesting with DeChambeau uh, at the WGC. He had a real kind of calmer tempo to his swing comparative to how he typically goes at it. And then it was funny, you could kind of see on Sunday where, he started really lashing at it, and it I think it kind of cost him. So the next guy that I'm landing on, I'm going to go with Victor Hovland. Um, just a ball striking genius, and, you know, it is still going to be the putter. Of course, around the green has gotten better. Um, you know, that withdrawal you see here, right, that was the old sand in the eye. Um, and he wasn't playing that great at the U.S. Open, but he had a good showing at the Open, um, you know, and really it's the ball striking. Uh, and, you know, these different areas of proximity for 175, I just, I always kind of look at him not too far off from Morikawa. It's just if his putter, and of course, you know, he's got a win. Uh, he had that win over in Germany. Uh, had, a, you know, the win, what was it? The, um, what was the Puerto Rico Open? It was one of the kind of off the walls. Uh, you can see Bent's not his best surface, but it's so minute, 0 0.08, you know, where his best is Bermuda, which is 0 0.01. So really... The guy can just string along. You can see he plays difficult course as well. Uh, you know, don't really need to click on off the tee, but we will just to see. I already know. I've only seen him have like a, one bad round off the tee. Here's around the green is where the issue. But you can see typically he does gain with the putter. I don't know if we even looked at uh, Northern Trust. So when he played here last year, well, so this would have been a TPC Boston. He had an 18th. So I can't really count that. Uh, what did he do at the BMW after? He had a 40th at Olympia. And then the Memorial. Not the greatest showing, 47, 48. So, doesn't do that well at Jack's place. What about the Genesis? He had a 5th this year. And did he play Arnold Palmer? Did he play API? Yeah, he had a 49th, 40. So, also not a big fan of Bay Hill. Uh, 3M played there in 2019 at a 13th. The Honda missed the cut in 2020. Let's go look at his WGC events. Uh, he had a second place. That was, uh, yeah, that was pretty impressive at concession where he had that like nine on one hole and then just still made a huge comeback and just started going in Fuego. Um, did I already look at the CJ Cup? He had a 12th at Shadow Creek. And then the Zozo at Sherwood, he had a 47th. So, again, I'm a fan of Victor. It's I'm not playing him just because of that. I'm just around that pricing uh, from a DFS perspective. Uh, I'd rather take a shot with Victor. Um, the next guy, one of the guys I've, I've, I think is one of the better uh, plays here. Now, this could blow up because everything is telling me he should do good. Of course, he just came off a win at the WG St. Jude. You know, he had that good showing at the Travelers. Uh, he had the Charles Schwab. He had a second here, of course, at Liberty National last time it was played here in 2019. 
the guy has been, you know, he does everything. He checks all the box. You can see my big model. He's a second rate. Um, but if the putter keeps going the way it is, I see no reason why Abraham answer can't win here. You know, get a, almost back to back wins. So why not? You can see Bent's best putting surface, uh, which is good. Kind of shows on difficult courses. You know, it's not where he strives. He's still positive, though. Uh, we look at off the tee. You know, pretty steady incline. You see around the green here or there. But the guy's a solid putter. He's solid around the green approach. Uh, everything that I'm looking for. And we already looked at the Northern Trust. What did he do at the BMW after that? Had a 33rd. And let's go look at Memorial. Not so great at Jack's place. Uh, what about Genesis? Miscut this year. Not that great at Riviera. Probably why he's showing his difficult courses aren't uh, where he shines too much. A 56 at Arnold Palmer. Doesn't play the 3M. What about the Honda? Miscut in 2018. So there you go again. Another difficult course. I talk myself off this. Uh, of course, the WGC St. Jude. This is just pulling up all the WGCs. Uh, at the HSBC, that's a, a course over in Asia. That's the Club Day Chipotlepec uh, one. And do, 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 this would be the one at concession. The CJ Cup, he had a 28th. And the Zozo, he had a 35th. So, like I said, I like him. I like it from a betting perspective. Um, I've got a bet on him uh, on the uppers. And then uh, Scotty Scheffler. So a little side note, uh, and this was at TPC Boston, but Scotty Scheffler actually shot a 59 at the Northern Trust. It was round two. Um, and also, what did he end up? Uh, a T4 after all said and done. Again, that was at TPC Boston. But I just really like the way his game's been going. You can see from me from a modeling perspective, again, it's going to be the putter with him. But you can see over the last 24 rounds out of this field, he's ranked 28th with the putter, so that's not bad. I've always noticed with Mr. Shuffler that, um, you know, I'm never worried about the 10, 15 footers. Like, he's more likely to make those. It's that, like, four to five foot range that just makes me nervous. I've seen him miss so many. Um, let's go jump on Scotty and run some of the comparables and go look at. So you can see the putter overall has been his nemesis, um, but handles difficult courses, can of course handle the wind. Not stating, I've not looked at the weather, so I'm not stating that it's gonna be windy. Um, off the tee, still looking good. You can see green on everything, except you know, a long time ago, that was been the putter was more of his nemesis. You can see his last two rounds, uh, even though he scored pretty well, but he still lost strokes against the field. With putting uh, the U.S. Open, you know, gain, funny enough, loss off the tee. So it was kind of a flip-flop there. So let's go look at what did he do at the BMW. He had a 20th out of the 70 guys last year. Uh, what about the Memorial? He had a third recently, a 22nd before that. So he handles Jack's place pretty good. The Genesis, he had a 20th this year and a 30th before that. Missed cut before that. What about the Arnold Palmer in 2020 at a 15th? Has he played the 3M? Nope. What about the Honda? Nope. Doesn't do a lot of the Florida swing. Um, WGC events. So this would have been at uh, concession. He had a fifth. Of course, the recent Memphis WG St. Jude. And then a 15th before that and a 26th at uh, Club de Chipotlepec. And let's take a look at the CJ Cup. He had a 52nd, and then the Zozo, 17th. So, anyways, again, I like Scotty. Um, you know, Patrick Cantley really would fit the mold if I just, I don't know, he's been so Jekyll or Hyde um, with that putter. Of course, you know, he ended up winning the Memorial, so he showed a ton of life. And let's go click on Mr. Patrick Cantley. I know he does well on POA. Okay, well, Vince's favorite surface. I mean, again, you will almost call that a quarter stroke. Um, wanted to see. So yeah, he lost almost three and a half strokes with the putter here recently at uh, TP Southwind, I believe. Um, did okay on these three, and then he had this streak. This was the streak I was talking about. So he had five tournaments in a row where he was just losing strokes and missing cuts. So it looks like he's kind of figured out the putter. 
Um, could be a sneaky play from a DFS perspective. Again, I'm going to lean to Daniel Berger instead. Um, you know, you could see probably a little better form. Sneakily been playing good. You can see his ownership's a bit high, but so is Cantlay's. Um, you know, he wasn't getting a whole lot of birdie or better opportunities, but that's at least starting to show on the green. Had a good showing at WGC. Had a good showing at the Open. Not the greatest at John Deere, uh, but a good showing at the U.S. Open. He's played here before. Uh, quite a few times. Uh, he did not play at Liberty National, but um, TPC Boston had the third, T15 prior. He also is number three ranked in my model, if you care about that. And then I know Bermuda's his best. Well, that's crazy. Okay, Poa. I actually would have thought Bermuda was his best putting surface. So Bent, but he's still a positive putter on all surfaces. You see, uh, okay, on difficult courses, can handle the wind. Let's go look off the tee. Eh, it's gotten a little flatter, um, but still, you know, it's moving there. You can see that represented here. So he's not gaining or losing off the tee. Um, you can see at the WGC gained a little bit. Let me just see some of his better performances off the tee while we're here. So his best was gained six strokes in 2020 at the PGA. That would have been at Harding Park. Uh, Wells Fargo, there's a couple of St. Jude's that I guess would be Bridgestone. Um, just curious. And the CJ Cup that we're going to look at. Okay, let's go filter through. So we already looked at the Northern Trust. What did he do at the BMW after that? He ended up 25th. Had a second back here, 10th of 33rd. Uh, Memorial miscut recently, so not so well at Jack's place. What about the Genesis, a couple miscuts. Arnold Palmer miscut in the 13th. What about the 3M, he had a 15th, that's back in 2019. The Honda, he had a 4th in 2020. Let's go see his WGC events. He's done well at the St. Jude. The HSBC, that's a while ago. The CJ Cup, we already saw what he had a 28th. And then what about the Zozo? And a 17th, not worried about the 2019. Okay. I'm liking Daniel Berger. It's been playing well. And at that price tag, like I said, you know, when it all comes down from a DFS perspective, you could kind of flip these guys in and out if you wanted to change. But Projected ownership is about the same, so you're saving 100 bucks. Um, go there. I got a bet on Hideki. Just you know, last time he had a good putting show, a really good putting show. So he, of course, at WGC he had a uh, a good show. But I just always go back. I was so shocked on what he did on Bent Greens at the Masters. Um, these are Bent Greens, 40 to one. You know, definitely could plug him in. Uh, he's you know kind of off and on. Of course, he missed a cut recently at the Wyndham. The putter went south again, um, but. If it's hot, man, 40 to 1 from a betting perspective, not bad. You can see, of course, it's all about the putter with him, but a great ball striker. Uh, and also, really, a good player on the greens. Um, I think a lot of people don't think of that. Uh, Webb, you know, he showed a little bit of light, but it's been kind of like Jekyll and High Webb, where he's having big numbers, slow numbers. I'm still just not there on Webb. I will, you know, for the price, I'll end up on Harris English. And, you know, the guy, of course, won the Travelers. He won the Tournament of Champions. Um, the guy's been playing great. And he also, what do you have? Yeah, he had a second. So he played great golf. If it wasn't for DJ just going in Fuego, um, you know, he would have been a winner in any other times. Uh, was not there for the 2019, but you can see crazy with the birdie or better opportunities. Uh, everything here is elite. I would say his weakest would be the 175, but he's still... I don't know, not middle of the pack, a little less than middle of the pack. Let's go look at Mr. Harris English. You see Bent, uh, they're about almost dead equal, but he gains, I don't know, I'm just to call it almost a half stroke against the field. I'm Bent, can handle difficult courses better than others. Uh, I can handle wind if for some odd reason we do get some wind there. You know, it is off the river, you know, Hudson. You can see this is where he had his dip in his career, but his head made a resurgent resurgence you see off the t is typically where he could struggle uh gaining strokes 
All right, uh, let's go look. What did he do at the BMW? So he ended up 40th, 47th. So he's had some experience up there. Memorial, he had a 13th recently, an 18th. That's actually not recent. That was, that was 2020, I apologize. Uh, the Genesis, that's a while back. He had a 10th, but some miscuts before that. What about the Arnold Palmer? He had a 26th recently, a 9th before that. About the 3M, an 18th in 2020. About the Honda, he had a 17th and a 12th at PGA National. And WGC events, uh, of course, you know, he had the fourth, uh, where he, just like DeChambeau, kind of blew up on the back nine. And da, 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 what else here? I'm just looking what sticks out of anything. Nothing really amazing. Um, he's done okay in no cut WGC events. And then the CJ Cup, he had a 10th uh, this past fall. And then the Zozo, he had a 28th. Okay. And then again, he won the Tournament of Champions, which is a field, I believe, of 40 off the top of my head. Um, next guy I'm laying out is Paul Casey. Again, just taking ball strikers. Um, you know, tournament history. He didn't play in 2019, but overall, not terrible. Um, he's been showing really good life. I mean, the U.S. Open, he had a T7. The PGA had a T4. The WGC had a T5. Um, even looked pretty good in the Olympics. Uh, you know, played pretty well. And um, let's see here. Everything here ticks the boxes. Again, it's the putter with Paul. You can see Bent's his best putting surface. Difficult courses he can handle. Handle the wind. And if we check off the tee, no problems there. He's got distance and he's got accuracy. You can see the putter has been, you know, again, like I mentioned over the last five rounds. Been a little bit of a bugaboo, but you can see he gained seven strokes with the putter at WGC St. Jude. Let's go take a look. What did you do at the BMW? A 16th, second way back in 2016. Memorial, a couple missed cuts. Does not like Jack's place. Uh, the Genesis, special one. That was a while ago, but he had a 37th most recent. What about the CJ Cup? Yeah, 69th, that's not good. Uh, and what about the Zozo? Yeah, 35th. All right. But I like Paul. Of course, Patrick Reed. You know, I already told you guys he won here uh, previously at Liberty National. Uh, but his game, I mentioned this earlier, his game is just not where I want to see it. You see also terrible from 175 to 200. Uh, a lot of the shots are going to be coming in from that range. Um the putter has not been where the putter needs to be, and also fairways gained. I don't have terrible. Like I said, he's starting to hit, he's been hitting that fade. He's been a lot more accurate, but um, yeah, uh, I'm out on Patrick Reed. But you know, again, from a DFS perspective, when I do the ownership projection ownership on Wednesday, we have to see where he's at. You know, you could flip flop. Uh, you know, these guys, uh, Cameron Smith. It's kind of funny. I actually, uh, as I mentioned, this was my one year anniversary, so I started. Uh, doing the show uh, back at the FedEx Cup playoffs. Uh, Northern Trust was the first event I did. And like I said, don't go check it out. It was pretty bad. But um, the guy that I start, was on and, you know, and was at that time just under the radar was Cameron Smith. And he had a hell of a run uh, through. He was like, you know, I think he was in the 6,000s from a DFS side, you know, low sevens, high sixes. And uh, he was the guy that was, you know, cracking, cracking lineup. So, He's not, you know, he's on everybody's radar now. Now you could say, um, you know, not the greatest uh, at the U.S. Open and Memorial. But, you know, he had a good showing at the Open, and that was like missing every fairway. So what we do know about Cameron is he can play out of the fescue. He showed that. You can see, though, his pretty or better gain is, you know, off the charts. Uh, good ball striker, not the best, but, you know, his around the, game, around the green, the putting. Uh, everything else is where I want it. Also, I like his projected ownership. I think people are a little bit nervous because of the fairways gain. It is going to be about what the driver does. He does have to keep it in play. I did mention that these fairways are, I don't want to say super wide, but, you know, they're, they've got some room. It's just if you get off them, uh, a lot like the open, you're going to be in that fescue. Uh, you can see Poe is his best, but, you know, not by a ton, uh, but is positive on all putting surfaces. 
you know, not the greatest on difficult courses, but he's not losing. Um, I guess over his career, he's shown up on easier. And again, that's a, it's a pretty long career. Uh, his game is a lot better than it was. Can handle himself in a win. Of course, he's an Aussie. Um, let's go look at off the tee while we're here. Actually, with him, it makes sense. That's kind of funny. It's kind of brrr. So that's something he does need to pick. You can see right here. Not gaining a whole lot there, but all everywhere else. But he did gain at uh, in Memphis. Gain with the driver. Gain at the RBC. And you got it. You got to hit it straight there. Uh, gained at Walea. And then the Zozo. So that's where he uh, also popped up on my radar. Um, and I talked about that, of course, was part of the reasoning for him in the FedEx playoffs. So uh, did we look at the Northern Trust already. So he had an 18th in 2020, a 59th last time it was at Liberty National. So maybe that's also some reasons people are not on him. Um, and I'm okay with that. I get that. What about the BMW? A 20th. Uh, so again, as I mentioned, so he had an 18th, a 20th. He really did well, uh, again, for Cam Smith at that time. Uh, the Genesis, he had a fourth here recently. So, again, a tough course, a sixth. So, again, which is kind of funny saying here that he's not really handling tough courses, but everything so far is kind of telling me that he can handle a tougher course. What about the Arnold Palmer? He had a missed cut, but a 34th. Wait a minute. Let me look at that again. That's 2018, the missed cut, so I'm not too worried about that. Did not play the 3M Open. Missed cut at the Honda, but that was back in 2019. WGC, he did, you know, had an 11th at, uh, in Florida there at concession. Um, the Golf Day Chipotepec, he did pretty well back in 2019. Okay. And last but not least, I kind of already showed, but we'll just go over it again. So the CJ Cup, uh, he had 11th there at Shadow Creek. And then the Zozo, he had a fourth at Sherwood. So, again, I like Cam. I'm a fan of him. Uh, also, if I had to pick between what I've been seeing out of Reed and Adam Scott, even though I know Adam Scott just showed uh, life at the, at the Wyndham. Um, but, yeah, I would go with uh, Cameron over them. Corey Connors, I put a bet on him. I mean, again, when you think of elite ball strikers and if his putter gets hot, um, you know, it's someone that you could definitely play. You know, Tony Finau, you now who this could, you know, I think he's like 60 to one. Also, I did not put a bet on, but could be someone. I mean, uh, you know, if he has another T2 or something like that, we're, we're definitely going to get those odds. So it will be a bad play, but you can see just not doing the things. Hasn't been in the form. Uh, he had a second place shocker uh, back in 2018. T30 at Liberty National, and then he missed a cut at TPC Boston. Uh, you got Joaquin Neiman who came out of the T30 at Liberty National. Good, great ball striker. Ronda Green's a little suspicious. Uh, his driver can get a little wayward too. So funny enough, the next guy I'm going to land on at this price range that I like is Sam Burns. Um, of course, one Valspar. Tough track. Got to keep that in play. A bit of water out there. I didn't put that down as a track, but Ennisbrook, Copperhead. Um, you know, you could put that right in there with like the Honda and also the Arnold Palmer. Uh, typically, I always think of, you know, Burns on Bermuda, you know, hence, of course, the WG St. Jude. But, um, you know, you can see on my big model, it came in seventh. And I'm not, you know, again, I, I'm just saying these are all the little points I'm looking at. The mini model, you can see everything's good. Now, the driver can get a little wayward, as you see. Uh, but everything else is top 20, pretty much. Uh, let's go click on Sammy. You can see he's a good putter all around. But as I mentioned, Bermuda is definitely his best putting surface. Um, you know, average courses, he does well on. So whatever that means. Uh, let's go look at the off the tee. So he had a rise, you know, dipped a little right here. But you can see that right here over the last 10. But, you know, he's been fine over the last five, doing everything pretty good. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So there's a Valspar, gained nine strokes, gained six. But, you know, actually lost almost three strokes off the tee. Gained off the Byron. So he had that, you know, kind of back-to-back -back really nice showings. Let me just click on. I just want to see where he typically is. So Byron, so the Genesis, you know, is one of the courses that uh, we were going to look at. 3M Open, the Honda, the RBC, which, you know, it's a tough track. All right, I'll run these through real fast. So uh, BMW. 
So this might be his first year, actually, even now that I think about it. Uh, yeah. I guess he did play the Northern Trust, but didn't make it through uh, to the BMW. Let's go look. So Memorial. The Jacks placed a 50th and 81st. The Genesis, we already said he had a third, a 23rd, a miscut. Arnold Palmer. You know, that was, I think, was shocking is that we all thought he would do so well on the Florida swing this year and did not transpire. What about the 3M? A 7th and a 32nd. Let me get that. The date's correct. There we go. The Honda, 64th, the 73rd, then an 8th. Um, at WGC events, he's only played in one at a second. And the CJ Cup. Did not play or the Zozo. Okay. So, again, I'm going on some recent form. And, again, what I think of what you need to do on this course well, I think Sam can do it. Um, of course, Kisner had that T4 here last year at TPC Boston. He had a T12 the year it was at Liberty National. You can make an argument. Again, you could flip those guys. Um, of course, you know, Kisner finally showed up. But you can see he does things. Ball striking is a little bit a little weak. But everything else, okay. Um, Fitzy, if you think of tough tracks, you know, he does typically pretty well. Missed a cut at TPC Boston, though. Sun Jam, kind of, you know, little, maybe a little more life been shown. Uh, at the Wyndham, the Rocket, Troll Hatton. I just, I gotta take a pass right now. He's just burned me so much. I just can't do any more Troll Hatton. Harmon, of course, missed the cut the Wyndham. Uh, I believe he, yeah, he had a T52 at Liberty, but had a T11 last year. You know, the guy I took a long, hard look at was Ian Poulter. Um, this, you know, the 175 I didn't like, but everything else uh, looks pretty good. Of course, he's coming off a T, you know, you can see his recent form has been pretty good. I believe, let me go take a look at his putting. Um, yeah, he does well on bent. Uh, Bermuda's is better. So definitely, you know, I'll probably sprinkle in some Ian Poulter. The next guy I'm going to actually land on is Kokrak. I'm actually kind of shocked right now that his projected ownership is coming in at 10%. Um, I thought some people might, you know, get off him after, you know, not the greatest showings or the last couple of events. Really, the putter, uh, for whatever reason, has just recently went a little cold for him. And over his life, was never a good putter, but this year has been a total different story. Um, but, yeah, you can see he lost at the Wyndham, lost, you know, two and a half strokes. The Rocket, he lost two strokes. Uh, you can also see the, you know, everything from a ball striking hasn't been great. But I believe, again, that guys are like one swing away. The guys was, you know, uh, just playing amazing golf. And I'm willing to go back. So, of course, he had a 12th year back at Liberty National. Uh, previously, a 13th at TPC Boston. So, you can see he's played in a bit of the Northern Trust. Uh, we go look at the BMW. He had a 6th last year. Uh, I believe that is Olympia Fields. I keep saying that, so let's just verify. Yeah, Olympia Fields. That's bent, par 70. A little shorter track, though. Um, oops, let's go back where we can run the rest of these. All right, so where are we at? The Genesis. Got a 32nd recently, a second way back. What about Arnold Palmer? He had an 8th recently, a 10th, and 18th, so it does pretty good around Bay Hill. 3M, nothing. What about the Honda? He had a 9th in 2019, a couple of missed cuts before that. What do you do at the WGC event? So this would be concession. This was just recently. Approach was a little off. So some decent results at WGC events. Of course, he won the CJ Cup. At, it was his first win. Uh, and then, of course, followed it up at Charles Schwab. These are bent, right? Yeah, so gained 10 strokes on bent greens. He knew those greens, though. I think I talked to you guys about that. Of course, MGM played a lot of golf at that course. Uh, saw that course way more than anybody else. That was somehow knowledge that did not come out till of course, during the tournament. And then, of course, the Zozo, he had a 17th uh, at Sherwood. Again, gained five strokes on Bent. So that's a bit of it for me with him. I think I think the putter will come back. Uh, I think it's just a little uh, dipped out. Um, ba -ba -ba. Russ Henley, you know, I know he choked, uh, stung me at the Wyndham. But 
everything I've seen out of Russ, this could fit him very well. Um, not that I'm picking so much for him to win, but I'm thinking he could definitely top 10. He had a T59 here prior, um, but a T8 last year. I think he's just playing better golf. He's back. You know, Russ is a streaky kind of player. You can just, I think I showed you guys that last time. Of course, Bermuda's his best, even though he just did not putt that well on Sunday at the Wyndham. Let's go look it off the tee real quick with him just for our viewing pleasure. Eh, kind of flat across there. But you can see, gaining, gaining, everything well. Uh, he's an iron master. This is what I'm saying. So you can see since the miscut at the Memorial of 13th and 19th and 11th, he had a miscut at the open and then a seventh. Now you can look and say, okay, John Deere is pretty easy. The travelers, but the U S open, you know, that was nothing, uh, to sniff that at Torrey Pines, the South, um, you know, had a good showing at the Honda, the RBC. Then he, you know, had a good show. So we can already see he did good at the, uh, the Zozo, the CJ cup. So a lot of no cut events. He's done well. I mean, I'll pump in the WGC just so we can take a look at that. You know, kind of whatever you could kind of state. Um, trying to think if there was anything else. What about Genesis? And then we'll take a look real quick at uh, Memorial. Oh, I'm mad. I'm just gonna play in Wells Fargo. I was just curious. So yeah, some of the tougher tracks now, but I like him here. Sergio, great ball striker. The putter's a de debacle. That's on. He could do well. Could be a good play. Usually, not a bad. Uh, people typically ask me, and I, I am going to do my favorite bets, but I've got two guys that I auto bet first round leader. Uh, and I've been doing it most of the season. That's Munoz and Sergio. So if you, I don't think I have a first round leader, but if you, if you want to know who I like from a first round leader, I like those guys. I mean, we've had some crazy first-round leaders. Uh, as I mentioned, Troy Merritt, I believe last year, uh, shot a 62, uh, which tied the course record with Chapel. Kevin I, you can see the model likes him, but I'm just not doing it. Uh, of course, you know, he had gotten to the playoff. I don't think this course fits Kevin now that well. Um, I'd rather go with Lowry. Keegan Bradley, you know, uh, battled Burns at Valspar. That was really kind of the last great hurrah for him. Um, it was just a putter, let him down, but ball striking master. See who Kim, you know, I told, I didn't talk about this, but the preview show for the Wyndham, I said it would be so like Siwoo Woo Kim to come out and then win the next event after he literally, I want to verify this because I just can't believe it with my own eyes. Yeah, literally lost 17 strokes on approach, lost eight strokes on putting. Lost, you know, I mean, it was unbelievable what he did at St. Jude. And then to come out and, you know, still didn't do great off tee, but gained five, five, and two. So that's Siwoo Kim, man. When he's on a course that he likes, just play him. Uh, I'm, I'm just going with that from now on. I'm never going to question it, no matter how terrible he looked the, you know, six days beforehand. Um, Jason Day, right? Showed some life here. Uh, you know, it's always about the back. How's he going to feel? But again, if he's got crazy low ownership, Hey, I might plug him in. What do you do? Uh, so he had a miscut at 2019. Um, I don't know. It, it was kind of freaky how well he played at the travelers, uh, in the rocket. Bubba again, I don't know. Just, you know, he's again, has played decent, but just not my cup of tea for here. Streelman, right? Had a good showing at the Wyndham. Uh, what has he done? Missed a cut here at Liberty. Tringali, I don't mind. Um, I'll have to look a little more at him, but you know, not not for this side. The guy that I'm falling on is Sebastian Munoz. I just mentioned first round leader. You know, he uh, had a T43 and a T18 uh, at the Northern Trust. Of course, the 43rd was back down at Liberty. Um, the John Deere, I know he putted lights out there, um, but he's just He's just been ball striking the crap out of it, and he's been pretty hot with the putter. Uh, around the green can be an issue. You see the prettier better is good. Um, he's kind of my, like a differentiation play for me. You can see, though, over life his career, he does game with the putter. Bermuda's his best. And let's go. I mean, if you wanted to see off the tee, I didn't run that for him, but you know, pretty solid on the way up. Let's go plug in. So we looked at the Northern. What about the BMW? 
So last year he had an eighth at Olympia Fields. That's pretty solid. So he was kind of a sleeper there. Memorially miscut recently, but a 40th-ish before that. I don't know exactly what it said. Uh, what about the Genesis? A 43rd or 26. So some tough courses there. Arnold Palmer, 49th recently. What about the 3M? A 72nd, but that was in 2019. What about the Honda? 36 back in 2019. Let's look at some WGC. So this would have been at Concession. And that would be at uh, Club de Chipotepec. The CJ Cup, he had a ninth uh, at Shadow Creek. And at the Zozo, he had a 14th. So again, he kind of showed up in those two no-cut events. And since then, you know, even Lanto Griffin kind of showed up uh, during those events. And they've been playing pretty solid golf. Lanto, I think, has fallen off a little more than Munoz lately. Leishman, right? I think he, uh, I think he's actually won the Northern Trust. It was a while ago, um, but Leish, is, you know, he had that show at the Travelers, and that was about it. Of course, he won the team event with Cam Smith, um, but now out on Leash. And then I believe the last guy. Nope, I got two more. Brandon Grace, you know, good recent form. You know, had a nice show at the Memorial. Was even uh, popping around the PGA. It's not up there, but you know he was uh, in the hunt there for a bit. Uh, he had a T30 here last time it was played. You can see he does everything well. Fairway gain can be an issue, but you can see his birdie or better uh, has been really on the upswing. Model likes him. Uh, I'm not saying, but it, it, you know, just for you guys you know, typically when I run the model, it just kind of points me in directions, and then I go and just start doing further analysis, and that's what gets me there. Now you can see Bent's not his best surface. Uh, that would be Bermuda, but not by a ton. It says here you can handle difficult courses, but not so much the wind. What about off the tee? A little bit of a down tick, which you can see right here. But everything else, pretty solid. You see uh, he actually lost at the Wyndham three strokes, but uh, was gaining before that. I was trying to see... Uh... It was wrong about the PGA. I mean, it was the U.S. Open. I was thinking about. I digress. It wasn't the PGA. Um, let's go look. So do we are look at the Northern. Yeah, he had a 30th here last time. Some miscuts before that. What do you do at the BMW? A 32nd, but that was back in 2016. The Memorial. He had a fourth recently. That's his best showing. Uh, was recently at the Memorial. The Genesis. He had a 20th recently. Again, the best showing. Uh, what about Arnold Palmer? He had a 26 at Bay Hill. 3M, a miscut. What about the Honda? That's a little while ago, miscut. Uh, WGC events. Looks like he did not play a concession. Um, just kind of looking. Best was HSBC. He's played in quite a few of them. So, I don't know. I'd say a... Give him a C plus uh, for his WGC event history. Did not play in the CJ Cup I was looking for, and just curious about the Zozo. No, okay, but I like Brandon Grace. Good recent form. Uh, does the things that I want. Max Home I already mentioned is one of my favorite bets. Just again can handle tough courses, but it's either he's you know uh, typically gonna top ten or miss a cut. Grio, good ball striker, but. You can see that's kind of it, uh, where it ends with Grio. So you can see the putter goes. Hey, you know, T12 at the open. Some similarities, actually, that course, uh, I thought, uh, to where they're at, at the Royal St. George's. Um, and the last guy I'm going to land on, this is it. 7,000, Seamus Power. I know he had a little fallback at the Wyndham, and people say, oh, well, he's been playing good because it's, you know, junky courses or easy fields. Um, you know, we can go look, and I don't think that's exactly the case. You know, Bent's his best putting surface, can handle difficult courses over his career. You can see this crazy surge over the last six months in his stroke gain. The guy's just been playing great golf. Uh, over his last 10 events, you know, he's gaining uh, on approach everywhere. Um, so I'm not going to fault him uh, for, you know, a little bit of a fallback uh, at the Wyndham. Now, am I going to say he's going to win this thing? No, but for 7000 and I don't think he's ever played, if I remember correctly. Well, he played in the Northern Trust. That was back in 2018. Um, 
that's probably about it for that. Let's go. I don't know. So he's never played it. So I don't know how many comparables I'm going to have with this guy. He played the Genesis way back. I mean, it's kind of the same thing when I talk about the guys that this is running hot form. Um, you know, I just like the where he's at. And so for that price tag, um, I like it. I'm going to plug him in from a DFS perspective. And you can see ownerships up there uh, projected already. So I'm not the only one that's going on that limb, but um, that's it from my picks. And uh, let's go summarize this thing. Okay, so for my Fab Five, I am going with Mr. John Rahm to lead. You got Morikawa steady as she goes. Abraham Answer coming off his recent win as a WGC. Why not your second win be a FX Cup playoff event? You got Scheffler who's been playing great golf. We just need the putter. And, uh, of course, Berger just been steady. Now, the only thing with Berger um, was a little bit is that I just think of Berger on more shorter, uh, tighter courses. Um, but, you know, I I like his game right now, so I'm going to go with it. Next five, we got Harris English. Been in great form. Uh, I have no reasoning why I would not play Harris. Uh, of course, Victor, a lot like Morikawa. It's going to be the putter, but really solid. Tita Green can get very hot. Paul Casey, same thing. Need the putter. Cam Smith, a little different. Got the putter. Need you to hit some fairways. Don't be in a fescue the whole time. And then Kokrak, let's get back the putter. And then my final would be Burnsy. We got Russ Henley. So funny enough, both guys that burned me uh, to win the last two events bets. Munoz, always my first round leader. I like that. And you got Brennan Grace, but in good form. And then last but not least, of course, Seamus Power over the last six events. Uh, last six events he's played, just killing it. And then lastly, my favorite bets for you guys. You know, I'm looking at uh, Mr. Seb Straka here. We need some length. We need accurate. The guy has been playing some really good golf. Now, I know, you know, some of the results at the end isn't showing it, but I've been watching a lot of Seb Straka. Um, I like his game where it's at right now. I'll take a, a flyer. And then just so you guys know, this event uh, is not, like I mentioned at the WGC, even though Abraham Answer was pretty good odds. I, I believe it was like 30 or 40 to one. Um, which I think is decent odds, but you know, long shots don't typically hit in these events when you've got this kind of field, but it is a larger field. Um, and the guy's been playing great golf. So I'm going to take a shot 250 to one. I like that. And then on that note, we're going to be doing some long shots and that's typically what I bet. I've told you guys that, of course I have some that are not long shots, but, um, if I'm going to bet, I like a nice little return. If it hits, it's golf. You never know. Hey, Billy Horschel again, like I said, uh, barely made the FedEx playoffs and won the whole thing. So why not Aaron Wise? Uh, he actually gained with the putter at, uh, I believe, at the Wyndham. So usually he's a great ball striker. Uh, that's not the problem. It's the putter. So 201 on him. And then last but not least, if you're going to give me 41 at Harris English, I will take that. Uh, you know, you could argue right now, maybe could be one of the better players on tour over this season uh, on the events that he won. And he should have won uh, the WGC. So he would have had uh three wins this year one in the tournament of champions wgc the travelers hey why not uh, fedex cup event so i like harrison also right he came in second place last year and would have won that in the other year but of course dj like i said just went nuclear okay that's it thanks guys uh as i mentioned i'm getting this out a little earlier because i will be gone for a day or two but um hope this helps and again if you do me the honor click that like button share with anybody else you think might be interested and if you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe, right? I've got that contest and I've upped it to uh, two winners. So two grand if I get to a thousand subscribers before the tour championship. And if I can help you guys, as always, hit me up on YouTube comments and or Twitter at DFS Golf Guru. All right, guys, take care. All the best. And I will be back to uh, go over ownership projections, weather, everything you need to know before the lock show. That will be out Wednesday. All right, take care. <laughs>